Good morning, good morning, good morning again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the disclaimers, and again, we're shooting straight through, folks. In the description box, you're going to find the link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they've threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Well, folks, Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Also included in there, the Ozarks' first article in regards to Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help Boarding School Situation, a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called trouble male teens, that has and pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all have, which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy chasing after drag queens and trying and failing to defund public libraries to actually do his job. And you got a governor off his nuts, so please read that article, share it on all your social media. We got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollum's back in 2002, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you can hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured, abused. If you got young children present, folks, please use your headphones, all right? This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously parental supervision is very much advised. Trigger warning. This is a particular law review that was done in the summer of 1988 and is slanted not just very much in favor of the BRI, what we now know as JRC, but it as an adversives in general believing that it is right and just to control disabled people by threats of violence because that's what they are, folks. That's what they are. So be prepared to be triggered. I already have been, and we are almost done with this insanity, thank God. We're going to try to keep it short and sweet, but with how ridiculous this whole thing has been to read, yeah, yeah. All right, where we left off. Family-state disputes involve conflicting rights and obligations. The state's position is justified under its police and perpetrate powers to make all decisions for the institutionalized child, as well as some decisions concerning all other children within its jurisdiction. You see why there was a movement since the 70s to end all places like this? When you have the courts deciding that not only do your rights not matter, but if your family dares oppose the general idea that autistics and otherwise neurodivergent and other disabled folk should be treated as subhuman and be taught to accept it by means of violence, 
And if you don't agree with this, they're going to rip your rights away. If you're not concerned, you should be. Because you can join our ranks at any time. Life is a funny thing. We all get it disabled at some point. It's really all a matter of time. Whether it's by accident or simply getting older. These disability rights don't just matter to us, folks. Okay? Remember that. However, the courts have held that such state power is not to be exercised unless the parents have been disqualified as unfit. How any of these parents can be considered, how they have not been considered as disqualified and unfit when they send their kids to places that have been known to have killed six other students is beyond me. The interest of the parents not only proven unfit by clear and convincing evidence outweighs any claim that the state may have with regard to the actions as substitute parents. I don't know how much more clear and convincing, even in the time of 1988, you have to be that sending your kid to a place like this is a bad idea. It's kind of like with the AH stands, like right? what, what needs to happen? Does Roadrunner need to come out with a sack me sign to get you to see the point? This place, hence this little law review here, killed someone. They strapped him to a four point board, face down. That's already going to cause extreme ricks for asphyxiation. You didn't get put, while he's face down, a noise canceling helmet on his head. He dies. If you as a parent know this, and you are still sending your kid to the center where this can very well end up being your kid. I don't think you could possibly be more disqualified to be a parent than that. Just saying. Saying is all. The interest of parents of not proven unfit by clear and convincing evidence. Yeah, we've read all of that. Let's read further, shall we? Since the courts ultimately become involved in settlement of serious family state disputes, bringing the matter under the jurisdiction of the appropriate court at the outset could actually be most efficient and supportive of the family relationship. Again, preserving the family relationship in spite of all costs may sound well and good on paper. But the family idea and concept has been used as a bludgeon to preserve relationships that have ended up in death. I'm not sugarcoating it, nor am I making worse than what it is. Every single year, hundreds of names get put up on disability.org. The majority of these individuals are murdered by family members, significant others, and direct care staff. Okay? Wanting to preserve the family as an ideal is all well and good. But if you can't take each case on its individual merits, you have no business being in this part of the law. Because the reality is that dysfunctional families exist. Abusive families exist. And families who have parents who should have never been allowed to be parents exist. This is reality. The law should reflect reality. The law should act as checks and balances for the exact types of situations that I'm talking about. But more unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. The idea that we must preserve the ideal picture of a family when in reality that is never going to exist no matter how neurotypical we are forced to act. This should be alarm bells, folks. 
This is that cookie cutter crap I talk about so often. It is also used in these situations with toxic families. Where your ideal of what a family is and should be is used as a bludgeon against the person who's being horrifically abused and tortured. When they become the scapegoat as to why the family is not this romanticized idea as normal. And therefore it is okay for any number of atrocities to be committed against us. To force us to fit in with the so-called family does infinitely more harm than good. Okay? But this is what this man is advocating for. He thinks that aversives should be used to control those out of control disabled people. We gotta make them be normal. And if we can't make them be normal, we want you to scream. This is the mentality that we're dealing with. They'll try to sugarcoat it. They'll try to say that's not just true. They're trying to help you. And if you would just do as you're told, we won't have to hurt you, said every abuser ever. Ever watch a Lifetime movie? Look at what you made me do to you. That's the JRC. If you can't see that, you're blind. What did they tell Jennifer Masamba? You broke your contract. So the fact that we shocked you and punished you is your fault. Not their fault because they're batshit insane, but our fault for acting within the capacity of our disability. Therefore, we're going to help you get better with your disability by applying corporal punishment. If it doesn't make sense, folks, it's because it doesn't make sense. There is no subtext. There is no context. Okay? Good. I'm glad we established that. Court-supervised ADR would provide that a stipulation binding on the parties be entered and filed with the court when an agreement has been reached. This permits the court to retain jurisdiction over the matter. But here's the thing that we have proven with the Massachusetts courts and with the parents. The fact of the matter is neither the courts or the parents in this case are acting in the child's best interest. Matter of fact, in these sad situations, Literally no one is acting in the child's best interests except for the protesters at the JRC's doors. We're out there fighting for your child every single day. We are fighting for your child's right to self-determination and autonomy. We are out there fighting that they have a right to have their human rights respected whether or not they fit your bizarre idea of normal. We are out there fighting tooth and nail so that these kids can have a future that the courts, toxic parents, and all these corporations who make money off of us can have no more control over your kid's future. That's what we do. That's what we're here for. We are here to tell you that this is not acceptable, and that's in the politest terms. It is not acceptable that we be punished, shocked, starved, jumped, even in some cases sexually assaulted, all so that we can be made normal. Because it's never going to happen. There is no reality where anyone who is born with an atypical mind is going to magically someday transform into a neurotypical mind. Any more than it's likely that when I go outside for a pool day, I'm going to look up and there's going to be a magical unicorn with wings that will take me to Valhalla. Okay? These are things that are never going to happen. To try to force that with violence 
is appalling. It's torture. Point blank, period. It's not about life preservation. It's not about preserving this concept of family that can't really be seen outside of a 1950s sitcom. But this is what's forced on us. Not just autistics, but neurodivergence, other developmentally disabled individuals, physically disabled individuals, basically on the whole entirety of the disability community as a whole. We are ignored. We are looked down on. We are treated as subhuman. Nobody notices but us. There is no outcry unless it comes from us. Because even the mainstream media, as woke as they proclaim to be, they do not like looking at us or reporting on our issues. There is a general fear and disgust of the disability community by others. That is why you'll see protests, but you'll never see ours. Why it is rare to there be a news clip in regards to the protests at the JRC doors, and protests at Tobin World, or places like Agape. Because we don't sell. Because overall, our society still views us, even if it's more unconsciously, as subhuman. I'm taking this into a dark area and kind of rambling here, but I'm sorry I've sat here and watched it. I've been at protests with thousands upon thousands of other disabled people out in my state capitol. Not even a blip on the media's radar. It is the same protests that we have out there on their doorstep every single year. I have seen places like the JRC get a moment, a brief moment where it is covered for a couple of months before it is dropped as though it never happened and all society pretended that they never saw the original news reports and pretend like it never happened. Our issues and our rights are swept underneath the rug. We have to drag them out. To put it bluntly, you have no idea how much face time I have put in with politicians. Masking like hell. Playing my character of the doll to perfection. In order to get the smallest inch of progress. And you'll never hear about it. Why am I harping on this? It takes it back to the family, folks. They celebrate being outside the mold now. Unless you are outside in a mold in a way that they don't approve of. If you are outside the mold, but you are considered too strange, too abnormal, too disabled to be able to sell to the general public, then they will allow things like the medical model and like this lawyer here to do as they will with no scrutiny. And we're going to go ahead and mention why is this a bad thing? The concept of the family is a bludgeon to people like me. This is why we need more scrutiny. 
because families can be toxic. They can be abusive. They can stick their kids in hell holes that are absolutely a danger to their physical and psychological health. Kids have died in the name of preserving the so-called idealized idea of family. And I'm tired of all of us being used as sacrificial lambs for a concept that doesn't exist in the real world. We're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. And as always, folks, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.